Hey guys, Hitman89 here. I hope everyone is doing great. And I hope you got a gaming partner. Because today, I'm gonna show you the best split screen slash shared screen games to play right now. Without further ado, let's take a look at the first game. I feel like most people haven't heard of Oddballers. It's basically a series of dodgeball based mini games that you can play with up to 3 friends and whoever has the most points at the end wins. I played it with my wife and 2 AI players, she didn't like it that much, but that's probably because she didn't win a single round and I won all of them. <laughs> I thought the game was hilarious and I really enjoyed playing it. It's the perfect game to play when you invite people over, plus it only costs 20 bucks and it's available on all platforms, so go for it. The next game I want to show you is WWE 2K23. And I'm not even a pro wrestling fan, but in my childhood, I spent an insane amount of time playing WWF Smackdown on PS1, back when The Rock had hair, you know? <laughs> and now that I played WWE 2K23, it felt like playing a remake of Smackdown. Well, almost. My favorite thing to do is playing with no rules so I can bring the sledgehammer and beat the shit out of my opponents. Ladder mode is pretty fun too, you know it's the one where you have to set up the ladder and grab the money briefcase while your opponent is still passed out from the beating you just gave them. <laughs> there are plenty of other game modes and they're all fun. I tried 1v1, 2v2 and free for all. By the way WWE 2K23 looks sick for the most part because sometimes wrestlers can look goofy as fuck like they're cross-eyed or something. Anyway let's move on to the third game. The Last Story Crew is an underrated RPG that puts emphasis on player choices. And we're not talking about the different dialogue options that you get to pick or a couple of cutscenes. Here, depending on the faction you side with, certain safe areas become hostile and some characters can die, so think twice before you make a choice. The Last Story Crew has a Souls-like combat system, shitty graphics, average performance, and it allows you to play the whole game and split screen with a friend. I can't really think of many RPGs with local multiplayer, apart from Outward, but that was pretty average. Well, there's also this game I'm about to show you, cause at number 4 we have Diablo 4. Although your movement is restricted in local multiplayer, since you have to stay close to your partner, and yes, I said partner cause local multiplayer is limited to 2 players. Still, playing this on the couch with your significant other, sibling or best friend is way more fun than playing online. At least in my opinion, let me know if you agree. I played Diablo 4 with my wife on PS5, she said it was way too easy, but then again she died every 10 minutes, so yeah. Keep in mind multiplayer only becomes available after finishing the prologue and the PC version doesn't have local multiplayer. Speaking of PC, at number 5 we have Sackboy A Big Adventure, which landed on PC last year, you know, after a couple of years of PlayStation exclusivity. By the way, this game is included with PS Plus Extra and Premium, so if you have one of those memberships, you should give it a shot. And even though Sackboy looks cute, it can be challenging at times. Especially if you want to collect every orb, cause some of them are hidden extremely well. The game is obviously fun, but what I really enjoy doing here is, whenever my wife gets stuck and can't make a jump, I come back for her, I carry her, and I throw her off a cliff. <laughs> I'm such a piece of shit. Now if you and your partner don't feel like cooperating that much and you'd rather just beat the shit out of each other, then you'll be happy to know at number 6 we have Street Fighter 6. Did I do it on purpose? Yes. Are these games ranked in the order that gives me the best transitions? Yes. So let's just talk about Street Fighter 6. The newly added simplified controls are great for newcomers, aka noobs who just want to play casually and mash buttons without having to learn anything. There's also a mode called Extreme Battles which adds some more variety to the gameplay and it's pretty fun. But there are a few iconic characters that are missing and that I'm sure will be added as a paid DLC later on. And I don't know about you but I don't really like the art style. By the way, shout out to buygames.ps for providing me with most of these games. Their link is in the description so check them out. Moving on to the 7th game, Fueled Up is basically overcooked in space. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up for more shitty comparisons like this one. In all seriousness though, on this 4 player co-op game you have to fix your spaceship, keep fuel in its engines, replace airlock batteries regularly to avoid being sucked up, and most importantly, as you get closer to losing, you gotta keep yelling at your friends to stress them out even more. Fueled up might seem quite simple at first, but it quickly gets nerve wracking. Trust me. Next we have a racing game. You guys remember Flat Out, right? 
Well, this is trail out. I like it when people copy games and barely change the name. <laughs> at least the game is good. And don't worry, I know the footage you're looking at looks horrible, but the game looks way better than that. It's just that my graphics card sucks and the textures never loaded. So if you have a decent PC and an Xbox controller, or if you don't mind playing with the keyboard, give trail out a shot. It's getting a major update soon and a console release later this year, so I'll finally be able to enjoy it properly. I can't stand looking at these ugly ass textures anymore, so let's just move on to the ninth game. Ship of Fools is a two-player roguelite game where you and your partner will have to shoot a bunch of monsters before they sink your ship. There are different types of ammo that you can use to load the cannon. You can also use the planks you get to fix your ship, but they're rare, so do your best not to get hit in the first place. Like I said, this is a roguelite game, so every time you die, you have to start over. You obviously get to keep the upgrades you've unlocked, so that makes the following run easier. Last but not least, I wanted to make this video future-proof, so I've included Baldur's Gate 3. I don't know when you're gonna be watching this, but at the moment of making this video, Baldur's Gate 3 is still in early access and split screen will only be added when the game fully releases on August 31st. It plays like Divinity Original Sin 2, which also supports split screen, so if you haven't played that one yet, you should definitely do it while waiting for Baldur's Gate 3. Before I let you guys go, here are a couple of upcoming games that are worth checking out later this year. Moving Out 2 will have you moving some more furniture recklessly. It's like the first game, except it gets crazier. Four years after trying 4, we're finally getting a new one. As usual, there will be three playable characters that you can switch between at will, and you'll have to solve some physics-based puzzles. And that's gonna be it for the best split-screen games to play right now. If you want 10 more games and you don't care if they're slightly older, check out the video I made last year by clicking the bubble that just showed up. As usual, if this video helped you or made you smile, a thumbs up and a subscription are always appreciated. It's been Hitman89, see you guys very soon. For the pay stub, all your pay up Don't make love to the game, bruh Fuck the game up Change up, rearrange stuff To your greatness Same us for the way up Play the game, bruh